Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here, back in Botswana with another video. And today we're heading out on our first land safari. Uh, it's gonna be really good. I'm hoping, uh, you know, we might find some big cats, anything like that would be amazing. But before we get started into the Chobe National Park, I thought what I'd do is run you through how I'm gonna set myself up in the vehicle. Because, you know, once we're in the National Park, can't move too much, can't change too many things, and I need to be sorted so that if we get a sighting, I can make the most of it photographically. Um, you know, if you're going on safari, anything like that, hopefully you'll pick up a few Tips, uh, to help you with your shooting. But let's jump into it, pull out some cameras and show you how I'm gonna rig things up. Right, so before we get started, it's time to get set up because there's nothing worse than getting into the park, being five minutes in and bang, you're at a sighting and you're not ready to go. Um, and these safari vehicles, these Pangolin safari vehicles are set up perfectly um, because as much as I'm going in the front this time, just because less people in the vehicle, but the whole thing is set so it's not drastically tiered. A lot of safari vehicles have very high backs and low fronts. It means that everyone is competing for those front seats. But in this vehicle, it's separated out. There's no middle, uh, so all the photographers can see either the side and also you've got a great amount of space that I'll show you in a second meaning you can put that lens pretty much anywhere in this vehicle to make sure you make the most of that sighting but what we're gonna do is jump in the back show you more about that and uh, pull my cameras out so I'm ready to shoot right. let's look in the back Right, so I've jumped to the back and thought I'd just talk you through a couple of the features that make this a really nice safari vehicle to work with. Um, firstly, you'll notice the bean bags. You know, every single seat in the front and back has a bean bag that means you can shoot, get your lens on it, push down and really make a solid shot. Um, you know, bean bags are such a flexible way of shooting when you're on safari. If you've got a tripod or a head and you're trying to rig things up, it gets in the way. You can't take your camera off quick enough to move between sightings and this means that it's very easy for you to work in the field, um, especially when sightings and animals are moving really quickly. The next thing that's really nice is the fact that there is a lot of space on this vehicle. All of the seats are separate and they're not in some tiered benching. So if there's a sighting at the front and I want to move, I can literally move myself forward and I'm in a different place. You know, if it's at the back, I can get back here for it. And because, you know, if you've got multiple people in the vehicle as well, the way that the seats are set up means that if someone's in front of me, someone's in front of me here, I can stand, I can get into a different position and we've got a amount of uh, clear space that we can shoot through. And one thing that I'm really a fan of are the low sides. It means I can get down on the floor, um, you know, if I lay down, you won't see me, but I can lay down flat, shoot out the side and get a really nice low angle shot that is perfect for any safari shooting when you want those nice out of focus foregrounds and backgrounds. Right, let's get going. So we're in the National Park now and you know I'm set up and ready to shoot because we could find anything on route and you'll see that already I'm kitted up and ready to go. So I've got the 300mm on my D850 and this is probably what I'm going to use for most of the images uh, whilst I'm in Botswana. You know that long lens means that I can pick up my subjects at a distance but that 2.8 aperture is just the best for getting those nice depth of field effects. Um, you know if you don't have a long lens one of the things about Pangolin is that they'll actually lend you a camera and lens while you're here. So you know if you want to try out some long lens photography you've never done it before this could be a really good place to come and do it. Um, but you know me being a bit of an optimist I've also got my second camera rigged up uh, with my 20 mil because you know if we get some elephants really close something like that and I can get that nice off the side wide angle image that'll be really really cool and I do just love those types of shots now in terms of my exposure and how I'm doing things um, the nice thing about being out in Africa is that it's very very bright there's also a challenge you know being bright I'm already at two thousandth of a second I'm at f5.6 and I'm already down to ISO 200 meaning I'm going to make the most of my camera um, get those really nice detailed files and that hopefully is going to make some stunning prints. Now of course when you see pictures from Africa those key moments you know those last half an hour of the day are really lovely times to shoot but that doesn't mean there's not going to be wildlife at other times of the day so you've got to learn to make the most of it. Now of course with the sort of background that you've got here you've got some harsh shadow and you've got you know under trees and things like that so you've got to learn to expose to get the maximum detail that means exposing to the right as much as possible to push all of that detail into the shadows so that when you're in post-production you can actually bring it to make it still look like quite a nice and pleasant image and then you can make the most of any sighting that you might have at any time of the day because you know if you're on safari for a week or so you don't want to be just getting 30 minutes at the start and the end of each day to make your pictures you really want to learn 
learn beforehand how to expose like that to make the most of any sightings. Right, so uh, we're gonna crack on and see what we can find. So we've been in the Chobe for about an hour and a half now, making our way down the trails. We've seen Impala, we've seen some, uh, you know, some elephants and stuff like that. But as we came round the corner here, we saw a vehicle in front of us pulled up by a tree. And uh, as we got closer, we could see there's a young uh, male leopard up in the tree and he is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so we've just moved ahead and I've got a view back at the tree. Um, he sat up on a branch really nicely, uh, but he's asleep at the moment, so he's not really doing that much. But all I'm doing is checking my exposure first, getting everything right. Um, I'm on about three thousandth of a second at 5.6, I say 200, because we've got a lot of light, it's still really quite bright. Um, so I'm pushing for the maximum detail that I can get. I want to kind of push those highlights as far as I can to the right, um, so that hopefully I can lift the shadows and get some detail there. Now the shot itself, uh, with the 300, to be honest, it's a little bit tight. Um, I haven't got as much space as I'd like, and I could use the 70 to 200, but the compression wouldn't be as good. Um, so what I'm actually doing is I'm shooting two images next to each other, and I'm hoping that they'll stitch together for a nice panoramic wide shot. Um, I think you know that added space with the tree to the side is going to look really quite nice. Um, so fingers crossed that works quite well. Um, I should probably just take a couple more um, just to be sure, but he is still asleep, and what I'm probably going to have to do is just wait um, until he uh, he wakes up a bit more to hopefully give us a bit of action in the shot, you know, a bit of eye contact would be fantastic. Um, the tree itself is situated over a bit of a bushy area that is a bit of a problem because if he comes down, we're going to find it quite hard to see where he goes. Um, but as you can see behind us, we've got this lovely like grass and stuff. And actually, off to that side is the river, and uh, you know, there's loads of grass on there. So if he was to walk around that way, we might get some really nice images. out the sighting for about an hour and a half and finally the leopard decided to come down the tree. Hitting the ground we thought he'd vanish but luckily for us he wandered around the back of the jeep and kept pace with us along the water's edge. As we tracked along the leopard crossed the road gave me some final chances to get the portraits I'd been after. You know it really did remind me why I just love my 300mm 2.8 being able to get those out of focus backgrounds and foregrounds for some really clean portraits. After about half an hour of some mad photography and some incredible sightings, the leopard finally moved off into the undergrowth and we headed on our way back towards the exit. The last couple of hours of the day provided some nice opportunities to photograph elephants, giving me a final few photos for that perfect first day out on safari. So we've been driving around for the last hour and the lights have slowly gone down, but we've just ended our drive with some incredible elephant views. Uh, we were driving along and some elephants were right next to us and now we've got one right behind us who's been with us for like 15 minutes or so. I've been able to get the 35 mil out and do some kind of wide angle stuff. Um, kind of bobbing down my 300 uh, just as low as I can get on the door to get some kind of shots across the foliage. Uh, looking really nice and something I didn't expect to get on the first drive but you know as the sun sets on the first day really quite good so we're gonna head off head out of the uh, park and leave these guys to their uh, to their dinner. My first day out on safari had been an absolute success. Being able to photograph leopards as well as elephants was just amazing. And for me, it was a really great introduction to the first part of my trip. Join me next time when we'll be heading out on the boat and out on the river to get some more images in the Chobe National Park. Until then, get out, get shooting, and enjoy your wildlife photography.
If you enjoyed this video, please drop it a like and please subscribe to the channel for future wildlife photography videos. Until then guys, I'll uh, catch you in the next one.